Okay. Hi everyone, this is Andrea from Buttercup Beads again, and I want to demonstrate how to do basic herringbone stitch today. Uh, it's a great stitch. You, we use it in a lot of projects. And uh, herringbone is a combination of, usually starts with ladder stitch and then we go into the herringbone. Herringbone kind of looks uh, like the weave, herringbone weave in a material. The, the, the beads tend to like sit a little cockeyed and they slant inwards. Um, this particular one, I like to refer to them as having columns. This is three column wide. Um, each herringbone is a series of two beads that you stitch at a time. But we have to start with the base. I'm going to demonstrate using doing a quick um, ladder stitch in the classical way. Check out my other uh, video on ladder stitch. I show you two ways to do it there. That's with a quick, uh, real fast way to do ladder and the classical one. So to start with, we'll need a little st uh, stop bead. Let me just get them different colored beads so you can see that. I'm picking some bright beads today and dark cord so you can see a little bit better. So usually when you start, you need, do need a stop or some people call it a tension bead. Oh, and I had one on here already, but let me take that off. So um, it's a temporary bead. So you put one bead on, pull it down to your tail, and then sew from the tail up again, up through the bead, and pull. And that just traps the bead on to its place and it's temporary. It will slide and eventually when we're done we're going to slide it off. I can show you here. I can just take this bead and slide it right off. So when you're finished your work it's there. So we're going to start again about this width so there's three columns but we need to start uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six column wide with ladder stitch. So ladder stitch again is pick up two beads, pull them down, these are size 6O seed beads. It doesn't matter. This works in every size, but uh, to video, uh, it's easier if we start with show with bigger, brighter beads. Can you see that, Clark? Um, then we're going to pick up two more beads. So I have my stop bead, my first two beads, and two new ones. And I'm going to sew up away from the stop bead into those first two beads. And then I'm going to sew back down the two new beads that I added. You got it. These beads are big, so the beads slide easier. So there's two ladders or two steps rungs to a ladder, one column, two column. And I'm going to pick up two more. I'm going to reverse direction, go back down, and then come up the new seed beads. You want to stack them hole to hole. Now we have three. I think I flipped my work over. Okay. Two more beads. Swing around, go back down the two end, come up the two new beads. And you're getting the picture by now. So now I have four columns. I got two more to do. My threads come up one side, I'm going in the back door the other way. You can flip your work over, to, so if you always want to work in one direction, you can do that. You can keep it stable. So we have five columns. Pick up two more beads. And when you pick up beads on your mat, you know, don't pick up each bead. Just lay them out. A good bead mat like this raises your bead up, and then you can just easily pick them up with your needle. Swing around. Go back into the two last column. Stack them. Come back down. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's what I want to match this one. Since my line ended up on my stop bead line, I'm going to take that off now. I don't really need that. And I'm going to start herringbone. Pick up two beads. Herringbone is a two bead stitch. Pick up two beads. Now, you can do it two ways. I, when I start herringbone, I like to go down both beads the first time. It just stabilizes that first row and makes a nice crisp edge. So I'm picking up two beads. I'm going to go directly down the second column. My stop bead was on this side, going back down. And that's going to make those two beads sit on the side. Again, holes are up. I'm going to come up the next column. 
So I have two sit sitting a little slanted. Pick up two more beads. Go down the next column. And pull tight. Okay, and so now I have two more. Go up the next column. And again, this is just for the first row. I'm going to go back down. I picked up my two beads and going back down my last column. And now we want to make a turnaround. So now I go back. I just step back one column. And I go back up to, this is now my herringbone row. Okay, first two is ladder row. First two beads is ladder. And this is the herringbone. I want to come back up the second column. And now I'm going to cross over back to the outside. There's two ways to do turnarounds. I'll show you that too, but this is the traditional way. So now I crossed over and then I sewed up the very last bead. That puts my thread at the top position and we can continue herringbone. I'm going to flip my work over. It's just easier for me. I'm right-handed just to keep sewing kind of in one direction. All right now pick up two more beads. We're coming out this first one. I'm going to go down the second first bead only and come up the next bead. This is a quick way to do it. You're going to go right down the second bead and come right up, but you're coming up from the bottom side of the bead, if you can see that, from the ladder, side, ladder stitch side. And pull tight. Okay, so now I have two columns of herringbone, or two stitches. I actually have three columns. These, the, Herringbone looks like it wants to pull apart, and it is loose until you connect it on the next round. So now I'm going to pick up two more beads. I'm going to go down the very next bead and come up the next bead. Go down one, come up the next. But when you pull tight, it's going to sit those beads or stack them in place, like the example. Now I'm going to take up two more beads and I'm going to go down. Now now we want to do a turnaround so I'm running out of room to come back up so I want to go down the next as usual. Seat them in place. My tail really wants to be in the way today. Now where do I go? Because now I've got to get my work is up, growing up this way so I want to be able to get back up. I, this is the only pain with this kind of a stitch. You've got to cross over, come up one, cross over, come up the next one. So I'm going to do that. And you can do it in two steps. So I'm going to do it, break it down, cross over one, cross over to the end, and pull tight. I'm going to flip my work over. Pick up two beads, go down the next bead, Come up the next. And you're nice and tight, Carl. Thank you to Carly. She's doing my shooting today. My daughter works with me. I love her. Um, pick up two beads. Go down the next. Come up the next. Pick up two beads. Repeat it. Go down the next. And come up. Herringbone goes pretty fast once we get rolling. And here we are at the end again. Everybody's like, ugh, I've got to make the turn around. I'm going to demonstrate one more time, the, the traditional way. So I picked up my two beads. I'm going to go down one bead, seat my beads in place, make sure your tension's tight, and you can, I hope you can catch that Carly, but I'm going to cross over to my needle, went down here, I'm going to cross over to here, you're making a little square, cross back out to the outside edge and go up. And we'll do another row. Pick up two beads. It's easier if I flip it. And I'm going to go a little faster because I want you to see how quick you can sew this. Go in, come up the next. Just remember, you're going down the hole this way and you're coming up the bottom of the bead on the next column. Go down one. They want to get a little tangled. You always have to kind of sit them in place. Cross over one, and if you want to, if you're, if you're getting good tension, you can cross over and actually pick up that outside one at the same time. Whoops. 
like that. So it's on the diagonal. And then pull. Do it again. I'm going to go down one. This is, I didn't flip it. I'm going to come up the next one. Add two. Go down one. Come up the next one from underneath. Back at the end. Go down one. Cross over. One. Lay your cord in the crevice there. Come up the end. Pick up two. I'm going to go quicker, but I want to show you an alternate way now to, and to turn around. Now, if you want, you can come down if, to turn around. You can pick up two beads, go back down the hole you're coming out of, pull them in place just like that, cross over one and come up you're crossing over one and coming up the, the new one, the new edge. That's a quick turnaround. It's another way you can do it. Again, at the end, pick up two, go back down the same bead you're coming out of, get your beads in place, sit them in place, They sometimes want to twist. You want to sit them so that they're whole sides up. Okay. Cross over one. Or cross, cross over and then sew up the two edge beads. Oops. So that's a quick way to do it. Okay, my husband's coming in. Okay, so here's the, uh, again, we're at the end. Quick way, go down the same hole, seat your beads in place, cross over, and come up the last two beads. I usually do it this way. I feel like it's, it's a little quicker to do. And to demonstrate one more time, I'll go back to the other way. Hope I'm not confusing you. Um, pick up two, grab your next bead. And the traditional way, pick up two, go down the last one, seat them in place, my thread's at the edge, cross over, one, cross over, Again, to the outer edge, one, and sew up the last bead, the last new bead. It's a really pretty stitch. All right, a lot of people have problems ending it uh, because if you can see here, there's little gaps between the three columns. You want to end it on a ladder stitch, and I um, hope I have enough thread here. Let me see if this one... I'm going to switch over to this little sample because this is more thread. <clears throat> little trick to remember with Fireline, it can be hard to, I'm using Fireline and I'm using a size 10 needle. Um, you may need to flatten the very end either between your fingernails or you can flatten it against a hard surface on the table. And then hold your thread in the pads of your finger and lay your needle on top of the thread. and and. <laughs> When you have old eyes like me, it sometimes doesn't work. So again, lay, try to lay the needle on top and then pull through. And it usually threads much easier that way. All right, so we're at the end. Um, I'm going to turn it over and I want to start ladder stitch to end this again. Is that a good position? Okay, so we'll have two. I'm going to pick up two beads. Wait, let me think about this for a minute. Pull them down. What I wanted to end up was I want to actually pick up four beads. So I picked up four beads. I'm going to start with the ladder. Now I'm going to go down 
And I like to reinforce this. You can go down one bead, but I go down two beads. And then we want to stack them in place. Now, again, we want to always have to cross over. I'm going to cross over. So here's my herringbone. Here's my new beads. Pulling tight. I'm crossing over, and I'm going to go up all four of those beads. I like to do that at least with the first one. But we have to go back to traditional ladder. So we're ending on two. We, we added two and two. I'm going to go back down those two new ones, pick up the last previous row of the herringbone, and then jump over to the next column of herringbone, add two beads, swing down those three from before, stack them in place, go up the three, and it starts to form a good ladder. Pick, pick up two beads, go down the next column, one bead, cross your thread over to the last three, so up the last three. Got to get in position, go down the, next, the new three. Go, pick up the next column, Pick up two beads, go down the previous three, cross over to the new three, or the, the two plus the one um, herringbone, and pull tight, pick up two, go down the last column, cross over, pick up those last three, and go down. And that gives you a nice straight edge with a little bit of herringbone here in between. To knot off your thread, if you're not, I'll just demonstrate how I do it. I always think of the string as the skeleton of my work, and you always want to hide your knot. So I go just with my needle, go under a previous thread, pull it down, make a little loop. You're going to go back down through the loop with your needle, which fell off, but you get the idea. And you want to do that twice in one spot. Now, you would do at least two knots in two different spaces. Again, I'm going to do it one more of those little half hitches through here. A little trick when you're short is to back your needle through your loop or change out to a shorter needle. But that's how I would knot. Then I would go through another bead to pull that knot into a bead. And if I had enough thread, it would tie again and then snip off. And here I would do the same thing, I would put my needle back on because remember we started with a stop bead and I just would, before, I wouldn't just cut it there, I would make sure I knot it off on this end too. But you'll be put, sewing a clasp on. So I'm just going to find a place here. Finding thread, and just go through the loop. Do that twice. And then hide that knot in and pull it by pulling it down through another couple beads or so. Again, I would use more thread and I would have knotted off. But that is basic herringbone with ladder stitch on both sides. Have fun with this. Try out, look out for my other beginner videos. Um, we're going to be doing square stitch, um, brick stitch, right angle weave, and have fun. Bye.